Hey guys, Aris, Hardware Busters. We all know that we have to use thermal paste between coolers or heat sinks and the parts that we want to cool down, like CPUs, GPUs, etc. Briefly, thermal paste is used to iron out any air gaps or irregularities between the surface of the coolers block and the CPU's head speeder or any other part that we want to cool down. Since heat is transferred through the thermal paste that we will use, it is no-brainer that it affects the operating temperatures. If you don't use enough amount or the thermal paste is of low quality, the contact won't be optimal, so the operating temperatures won't be as low as possible. Moreover, some thermal pastes age faster than others, so you have to frequently replace them while some other thermal compounds are ideal for below zero applications, referring to hardcore overclockers using LN2. Such thermal pastes do not address the average draw, so I won't deal with them in today's video. Most thermal compounds, or thermal pastes, whatever you want, use ceramic or metallic materials for better heat transfer along with other materials which allow for easier application and clean up of course obviously the thermal compounds including metallic materials are electrically conductive so you have to pay special attention during their installation in other words you should not use more than the required amount else the excess amount can go to areas where its conductivity will create trouble. It goes without saying that liquid metal compounds are electrically conductive, so you should treat them with extra caution. How you apply the thermal paste? The usual method is a drop at the center of the CPU's head speeder, while others create a line or a cross. In our experience, it doesn't play a huge role as long as you make sure that there is enough quantity between the coolant block and the heat spreader. If you want the best possible contact, just use an old credit card, not a new one, and spread the thermal paste all over the area you want to cool down. Also, please note that if you have a direct touch cooler, aka a cooler with its heat pipes, coming in direct touch with the component that you want to cool down, you have to apply the thermal paste on the cooler's heat pipes. Acti Cooling has made a nice video on how to apply thermal paste, which you will find in the description shown somewhere above. I took four different thermal compounds. Thermal Grizzly Hydronaut, Acti Cooling MX4, Noctua NH-H1, and a tube I found from Problematic. It doesn't write any model number on it. And I compared them to the new Arctic Cooling MX-5. Testing methodology. As a testing vehicle, I use my Jalapeno heatsink loader, which can apply a fully adjustable and super steady load in every heatsink or cooler. For this occasion, I chose a load of 500 watt and the cooler that I installed on Jalapeno is an NGXT Kraken Z73. So, I have a steady load, the same cooler, and the only thing that changes is the thermal paste between the cooler's block and Jalapeno's paste. Test results! I bet you all wonder whether there are huge differences between the thermal compounds that I used. Note that I applied more than enough thermal paste in each test to ensure that I have a good contact. Given the pressure that I apply to the block, excess amount of thermal paste flows to the free surface of my jalapeno loader and of course I don't have any problems there. As it seems, the best thermal paste is the Arctic MX-5, while the worst, by huge difference, the Grizzly Hydronaut. I should note here that this grizzly thermal compound that I used was too thick and probably not in its best form, hence the bad results. 
but this is an indication also that you should not use quite all thermal compounds. The Prolimatec thermal paste achieves second place while Arctix MX4 is 4 degrees Celsius behind, very close to the Noctua thermal compound. To be frank, I expected better results from Noctua since this is a brand dedicated to cooling. The Arctic Cooling MX5 easily takes the lead from all the other four thermal compounds that I tried and with a great difference from its predecessor reaching 4, 4 degrees Celsius. As you can see, there can be a notable gain in operating temperatures by using a good thermal compound, which you should apply well of course to have the best possible results. The Arctic MX5 comes in 4 tubes with 2, 4, 20 and 50 grams of quantity and in my country the respective prices start from 4 euros and go up to 40 euros from the 50 grams tube. This was another review, review tutorial, something in between. And I hope you liked it. If you liked it, enable the notifications to learn first when we post a new review on our Hardware Busters International channel. Until the next video, bye bye!